Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to be covering mainly the layer slicing uh, feature in the Preform FormLab software. Uh, for this first example, I wanted to show you guys how you can use this utility to see where you might have problems there when 3D printing. So essentially what's happening is you we're seeing a layer by layer uh, buildup of what each 3D print layer will look like um, one after another. And what we want to do is analyze our mesh to see where we might have problem areas. And the first thing that you're going to do is look at areas that might be too thin uh, of a shell wall or possibly be um, overall just too thin of a feature to be printed. And uh, this model here is one of my earlier ones where I did have a shell wall that was too thin and it did cause a print failure. Um, at some point for me. So I had to adjust it and um, make it thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that, that area and we can identify it easily with this. So we can see that around layer 950 we get a section that is almost so thin that um, that we, we might have an area where there will be a hole or a missing area. And it's kind of up in the air whether or not that will cause us an error, uh, a failure or not. I had one of these fail on me and one of them succeed. So that would be definitely a too thin of a wall thickness for 3D printing. So you want to avoid super thin cross sections. And uh, another area to look at is this here where it gets pretty thin and that might be a weak connection point, but it's not too thin to 3D print itself. So that's a that's the first thing you want to look out for when using the layer the the layer tool here. So now we're going to go look at the next thing we use the the layer tool for. Okay, so I opened up the model that has been properly uh, fixed with the layer thickness and I'm just going to show you that real fast. Actually just under here, you can see that in no areas here it gets so thin that it won't 3D print. So this has been a, a fixed version. All I did is in ZBrush I pulled in the inner shell here. Um, to be more forgiving uh, in, in terms of the sh overall wall thickness. So the next thing we want to work on is uh, model orientation and how that affects our layer slicing. So uh, I'm going to go and throw this model and rotate it into what you would think an ideal 3D print, uh, an ideal print position would be, and then we're going to analyze the layer. So pretty much you want to do things that are uh, a 35 to 45 degree angle um, when you can. It not only helps the printer do thinner sections of your model at a, any given time, but you also get a little bit more resolution per layer print. So you're not relying on just the X, Y axis to give you a detail. You actually have all three axes to give you each feature detail. Um, and so what we want to do is as we go through, we're going to see something up here. And what this is, we're, we want to look out for islands. Um, and this island here appeared, which is her earlobe. And what's happening is as this model prints, that earlobe is just going to appear out of nowhere. And that's going to cause you to uh, get a 3D print failure because now this is not going to cure to the rest of the model. Or you might look out in a will cure, but you'll get some kind of weird artifacting going on there. So when you orient your model, you want to run this through and just look out for these little islands popping up. And now in the preform software, you can do internal supports. But ideally, we, want, we don't want to have a bunch of supports from her ear to her neck. It just adds for extra cleanup. So with this particular model, and every model is a different case, we can actually orient this model to be favorable for us in that maybe we don't have to have supports on that side of the face and we'll have the majority of supports on the back side and the, uh, her left side of the, the model. So if we go and rotate her bust over to um, slightly this side and then to the front, we can check the layer now. And I, what we're trying to do is make it so the earlobe attaches gradually to the rest of the body. So get up here and you can see that at layer 88 or 1288, it's not there and maybe 1293. So it's about five layers. It'll go from nothing to be completely out. So you can fine tune this by rotating her forward and back. 
and you can start seeing the layer by layer build up. So we actually went too far and now we're causing this to to build a little island. So let's go back. All right, so after one more rotation, looks like we have a pretty good uh, middle ground here. So at 11.45, we have no uh, protrusion here. And then at 11.49, we have a very slight one. So I think our layer, bu layer buildup will be okay. Um, and you can keep playing with this, try to get it so it's as gradual as it can be. Um, so those are the things you want to really look out for. And uh, when you throw in the automatic supports on this model, which I'm going to do right now, um, we're going to see that it's going to generate model supports on the back side and the underside and then also inside of this cavity as well. And we'll probably get some for her chin, even though theoretically I don't think we need it. But sometimes um, the software adds a little bit extra just in case. So let's uh, generate the supports real fast. All right, so now that we have our supports generated, let's just take a quick look at our slice. So we can see all the supports are going up on the backside and on the inside here, and it did not add supports to our ear lobe. So that means that we did a good job at orienting the model to one, not have supports where we don't necessarily want them, which for me, I like to avoid any support structures on the face itself and keep them isolated to areas of less concern like the back of the head or through the hair where this area can be easily resculpted and cleaned up um, and not affect the form too much. Thank you again for joining us in this Mold 3D tutorial and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and definitely check out our Mold 3D website. Uh, be sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter if you're using those social networks and we'll see you again next time. Thanks.